A wave of revolutionary protests led by the young generation, particularly Generation Z, has sparked concerns among African leaders. The protests began in Kenya and have inspired the youth across the continent to demand better governance and to fearlessly fight for change in their respective countries. This unrest signals a growing dissatisfaction with leaders who are perceived as failing to fulfill their duties. In the last two weeks, a defining moment has unfolded in Kenya's history as the country's youth have firmly established their presence in national politics. Rallying under the powerful slogans of Occupy Parliament and Ruto Must Go, Kenyans have taken to the streets to vehemently protest the International Monetary Fund-backed tax proposals championed by President William Ruto. These proposals, touted as essential for stabilizing the national treasury and addressing escalating debts, have been met with resounding opposition. While official figures are unavailable, compelling online speculation suggests that well over one million impassioned protesters have made their resolute voices heard. And now something that is even more shocking has happened. The deputy president of Kenya has taken a bold step by joining the youthful demonstrators protesting against President Ruto and demanding the resignation of certain government officials. Before delving into the significant impact of the deputy president's actions on President Ruto, it's crucial to understand the origins and motivations behind this powerful protest movement in Kenya. A transformation is underway in the heart of East Africa, with the youngest generation of Kenyans at the forefront. Gen Z, born between 1997 and 2012, is actively reshaping Kenya's political landscape, compelling even the most seasoned politicians to take notice. Their strategic use of social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter has ignited a wave of activism that has captured the nation's attention. Gen Z is unapologetically demanding better governance and advocating for urgent action on climate change, making it clear that they will not be ignored. The generational shift has unequivocally brought forth a seismic impact on the political landscape. A striking outcome of this tectonic shift is the ascent of a new generation of bold, tech-savvy leaders. These individuals fearlessly challenge established norms and wield their digital acumen to deeply engage with voters and galvanize support for their causes. They unflinchingly cast a spotlight on corruption and incompetence, demanding unwavering accountability from those in positions of power. This phenomenon has birthed a considerably more dynamic and diverse political atmosphere that is increasingly attuned to the needs of the populace. Formerly unassailable politicians now find themselves compelled to adapt to this new reality, urged to heed the voices of the younger generation and collaboratively forge a more inclusive and sustainable future. Admittedly, this transition does present challenges. The old guard's resistance to change and legitimate concerns about the newcomer's relative inexperience are evident. Nevertheless, the impetus behind this movement is resolute, propelling winds of change that are unequivocally sweeping through Kenya. The emergence of Generation Z in Kenya is marked by resilience, determination, and an unwavering commitment to usher in positive change for themselves and their nation. This generation is actively challenging the existing norms and is resolute in their efforts to create a brighter and more promising future for Kenya. Their narrative continues to evolve, and it holds the potential to significantly alter the socio-political dynamics of Kenya for the foreseeable future. So coming back to the Kenyan Deputy President Ragathi Gachagwa, who seems to be distancing himself from the government, yesterday Deputy President Ragathi Gachagwa held a press briefing during which he delivered a speech that lasted for over 30 minutes. In his address, the Deputy President touched on various topics, including his concerns about President Ruto's apparent lack of concern for the welfare of Kenyans. He discussed several other significant points which I will cover in detail in this video. During his speech, Deputy President Rigathi Gachagwa emphasized the importance of respecting diverse views and opinions. He urged leaders to refrain from belittling the populace and to adopt a more considerate approach in their interactions. He highlighted the responsibility entrusted to him and President William Ruto by the Kenyan electorate, emphasizing that they were elected and not appointed to their positions. Expressing concern over the current state of affairs, he questioned the shift from a once widely supported government to the prevailing climate of unrest and disillusionment. Deputy President Gachagwa underscored the significance of listening to and engaging with the people, 
acknowledging the government's ongoing commitment to establishing institutions aimed at understanding and addressing the concerns of Kenyans with particular investment in the National Intelligence Service for this purpose. The Deputy President emphasized the failure in the intelligence and advice received concerning crucial government policies. He stated that the President of the Republic of Kenya has acknowledged that the citizens did not support the Finance Bill 2024 and that it's essential to listen to the people. The Deputy President expressed sympathy for President William Ruto, noting that the information about the people's opposition to the Finance Bill was not made available to him in a timely manner. He criticized the National Intelligence Service highlighting that if they had briefed the president earlier about the public sentiment regarding the finance bill, many negative consequences, such as loss of life, destruction of property, and civil unrest could have been prevented. Additionally, the deputy president mentioned that law enforcement officers were not adequately informed about the magnitude of protests in various regions, leading to unpreparedness for the intensity of the demonstrations. Overall, the Deputy President emphasized the need for accurate and timely intelligence to prevent such incidents in the future. The Deputy President expressed concerns regarding the current functioning of the National Intelligence Service, citing the actions and leadership of the Director General, Nolden Hock. It was highlighted that the appointment of the Director General from within the service led to the removal and reassignment of senior officers causing a disruption in the operational capacity of the organization. The deputy president emphasized the adverse impact of this situation, attributing it to the unpreparedness and inadequacy in addressing the sentiments and demands of the Kenyan populace. It was further stated that the director general's frequent absence from the country on business trips has left critical responsibilities unattended. Additionally, a call was made to the president to reconsider the reinstatement of the removed senior and assistant directors to aid in the reconstruction of the service for the benefit of the nation. The deputy president expressed the need for improved leadership and effectiveness within the National Intelligence Service to support President William Muto. Emphasizing the commitment to enabling freedom of expression for Kenyans, he urged security agencies to refrain from utilizing the criminal justice system for political management advocating for a conventional and consensus-based approach. The deputy president also highlighted the government's pledge to prevent abductions and extrajudicial killings from reoccurring, citing an unfortunate recent incident involving the son of the attorney general. He urged law enforcement agencies to uphold the promises made to the people of Kenya, establishing dignity and trust in the government's commitment. Furthermore, he referenced an alleged attempt to attribute countrywide turmoil to leaders including former President Uhuru Kenyatta, cautioning against the propagation of falsehoods and disinformation. In his address, the Deputy President emphasized that the recent protests in Kenya were a result of the public's dissatisfaction regarding the Finance Bill 2024. He urged the National Intelligence Service to refrain from employing past tactics of propagating misinformation and undermining leaders. Additionally, he highlighted the need for reflection and swift action in response to the president's directives. He expressed his willingness to engage with Generation Z, urging them to provide leadership and organizational structure to effectively engage with the government. Furthermore, he commended the youth for their patriotism and encouraged them to desist from organizing protests, as the president had acknowledged their concerns and taken appropriate action. This appeal was made with a paternal concern for the well-being of the youth and to prevent further loss of life and property damage. The deputy president emphasized that the incidents occurred as a result of government shortcomings, which is unacceptable. He proposed measures to compensate the families of the deceased, provide financial assistance to the hospitalized, and assist with burial arrangements. He urged the public not to hold members of parliament accountable for their alignment with the government's stance emphasizing that they were fulfilling their party's mandate. He discouraged any mistreatment or harassment of elected officials, advocating for a fair electoral process to address any grievances. The deputy president emphasized the importance of unity and cooperation for the betterment of the nation. In any case, we would appreciate your feedback. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing our content. We value your input, so feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below.